Hello, America Reads Tutors. My name is Dave Cole. I was the Tutor Education Coordinator for America Reads last year. Um, I'm a public health student and educational leadership and policy student out of the School of Education, a former teacher. And I'm here today to talk to you about engaging remotely with youth. A lot of you, especially returning tutors, are finding a, uh, a new and different challenge uh, by trying to engage remotely with youth and to support student learning in a new and different manner. And so the learning goals of today's session are that you can um, engage legally with youth um, and follow university and uh, state and federal guidelines, uh, but also that you can do so effectively so that you can um, uh, make the most difference and make the best of your time and make the best of your 2T's time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to share a little slideshow with you all. Um, and from there, uh, we'll go through it together. There's some videos, um, there's some points at which you will pause and reflect, um, expecting this thing to take about a half hour or so. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. And away we go. So engaging remotely with youth, uh, as a reminder, the Ginsburg Center seeks to cultivate and steward equitable partnerships between communities and the University of Michigan in order to advance social change for the common good. And part of that is uh, ensuring that what you are doing with youth is a uh, legal and B, um, that it's effective um, because we want the youth to really gain something from the experience. Um, as I know, all of you will gain quite a bit from the experience. Okay, so um, when you engage virtually with youth, you want to have a strong virtual service. Um, in other words, you want what you do virtually to be um, as effective as possible. Uh, you want to use more activities and less lecture. Many of you have started in your second week, maybe even third week of classes, and you know that just lecture and staring at the screen can be very difficult. Um, you want it to be culturally responsive, um, so it's, it's relevant to their culture and uh, it responds to their culture and it affirms it. Uh, and then you want to use reflection activities to gain feedback from students. Um, A, reflective uh, practices encourage their own learning and helps reinforce what they've learned, uh, but it also provides you meaningful feedback as this is likely a, a new and different experience for almost all of you. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at an example of an organization doing it quite well. This is coming out of the state of Wisconsin. Turning a bedroom into a classroom. Sharika Thompson is setting up for her eight-year-old son's tutoring session. Do you miss school? Yeah. For second grader Caden Barbie, this might be the next best thing. You got anything fun over the weekend? From Milwaukee. What number do we put in the middle? To Pewaukee. Nine. UW-Milwaukee junior Alyssa Ramzik is tackling math first with Caden. It's a little bit different um, just being on a computer screen. Like sometimes the kids will get distracted and I'm not there to like physically take the distraction away. Ramzik was helping in Caden's MPS classroom as part of a work study program. She knows the four elementary students she's now helping virtually. I miss them, so at least I get to see them and you know just ho hopefully help make their day a little bit better. This online tutoring project is only two months old. It was launched in response to COVID-19 by St. Norbert College and UW Oshkosh. Right now, UW-Milwaukee students are tutoring around 90 K through 12 students. The program is also helping families in 18 other states, even Canada. Good job. This free program has been a relief for Caden's mom. I need something to help me fill the gap. And a good challenge for her son. It actually keeps him engaged so that he still feels like he has that schedule, he has that structure of being in school. And we can read it. Okay. Try to push him, so I try to give him some more challenging books. Um, so it's pushing his reading level and his reading skills. Ramzik is studying to be an occupational therapist and wants to work with kids. This is giving her the experience she needs and more. At the end of the day, like I know that I'm at least helping a child, you know, succeed. Okay, see you on Thursday. Courtney Garish. Bye-bye. Spectrum News.
Okay, so kind of takeaways from this, we can see that um, there's a demand for um, these sorts of services, uh, but also that they've been useful, okay? And by providing some appropriate challenge to the student, um, it, it was found to be fruitful uh, both by the, the student, um, by the um, tutor, and also by uh, the parent, okay? So that's what we're looking for in overall equitable partnership. Okay. Um, further things, you want to simplify materials needed for activities. Simplify doesn't necessarily mean, um, I guess, to dumb down, to use the colloquial term. Um, it just, you have to reduce the complexity. Um, so I know a lot of times tutors would bring um, worksheets that they would do together, or they would, um, you know, do read alouds together from a book. Um, and you have to really make those materials more simple. Um, to be able to engage with them um, since you're not going to be sitting across a table or next to uh, the young person that you'll be tutoring. You want to break lessons into bite-sized chunks. Um, engaging virtually is just tougher, okay? You hear about Zoom fatigue. Uh, many of these students will be doing this as something supplementary, um, so you got to be mindful of that. And then lastly, set high expectations, okay? Um, you'll want to be sure that you are challenging them and that you're expecting a lot out of your, um, out of your 2Ds because um, they can achieve at a high level, um, but they need, they need the, the push in the right direction to do so um, in this environment because um, it, is, it is tougher to engage. So some things to keep in mind. Um, so there's been updated guidelines and communication standards from the Children on Campus office. Um, so recognizing that we're gonna be working with students in a, um, in a virtual environment, uh, they wanted to make sure that those standards were updated and they have been. We're gonna go through those together here in a bit. Um, understand university supported virtual programs to include Google Suite. Um, I know you're going to be using Google Classroom a decent amount. Um, understand Zoom and how to use it and how to use it properly. Um, understand Canvas and then Viewpoint. I don't know what that is. I'm just helping out for a little, little uh, start of the semester thing. Uh, but know what Viewpoint is and how to use it. Um, and then also familiarize, familiarize yourself with uh, privacy laws, such as the Children's Online Privacy and Protection Act. Your big takeaway from that is uh, don't use any sites that don't seem child-centered. Um, so there's like ABC Mouse, like that's definitely child-centered. Um, whereas like other sites, you know, your CNN news sites, that's not a child-centered site. That's a, a news site for adults. Um, and then the Family Education Rights and Privacy Act, uh, big takeaway there is that um, these students and these families have a right to privacy, so don't go sharing what you know. Um, I don't see why anybody would do that anyways because it's not that interesting, but don't do it. Okay, so let's take a look at these guidelines. And this is going to open as a PDF. Okay, big takeaways. Um, all virtual programs have to be registered. Uh, a lot of these information, this is going to be... Um, worried about by Raven, okay? Uh, but she might have to have you um, sign something or get some sort of affirmation from a parent or um, teacher. Um, in these programs, they need to be um, approved, okay? As far as safety and security type things goes, um, you wanna be sure that um, you're reviewing these online resources. You wanna be sure that, um, you know, things are safe. Okay, so if you're having something, cut something out with scissors, like just make sure you're, you're doing stuff in a safe manner um, and maybe even discuss that with a parent if possible. Um, you wanna make sure that you've made arrangements for um, safely using any devices. Um, I'm assuming that a lot of students are gonna be a little bit more familiar with it by now, but you know, what do you have to do? Um, and then supervision of one-on-one -on -one online engagement uh, really shouldn't happen. So everything's going to happen in rule of threes, which we're going to talk about um, a little bit more in a bit, but you'll have your background check done, um, or at least a rudimentary one. Um, 
and then all these questions need answered, you should really be reviewing this document on your own. I'm just trying to make sure that we've got the, uh, the big stuff covered. Okay, discipline. I mean, don't really worry about discipline. That's kind of by, beyond the scope of what you're going to do. Um, if something really is concerning, talk to Raven. Uh, last year when I worked here and tutors had questions about anything regarding discipline, I would have them ask Raven. That's good general advice for really anything in this program. If you've got a question, ask Raven. Okay. Um, now as far as training goes, uh, we're doing training like today right now. Um, these are the proactive steps, uh, but it's on you to really under make sure that you understand training um, and that you can talk to someone if you still don't understand. Okay. Um, so another thing, I know many of you aren't um, on campus right now, uh, but it's recommended that you use a uh, U of M VPN access uh, when you deliver this online program to reduce um, potential security breaches. Um, and I believe there's a way that you can access a UM VPN remotely, um, but that's probably something you'll have to Google because I'm not good at technology stuff. Okay, uh, let's talk about the new communication standards, also known as the social media and electronic communication, communication guidelines. Okay, so important things to know here, an authorized adult is an adult who's successfully completed and passed a background check um, and is able to work with youth. Child program participant um, is the minor that participates in a UM sponsored activity program. Um, in this case, this is gonna be your 2T, um, the student that you're tutoring. So all communication that you use should be done in the rule of threes, okay? So there should be no one-to-one -one communication with a uh, with a, um, a minor, okay, or your child program participant, okay? So communication to include email and text should be between an authorized adult and a child um, and another authorized adult, okay? Um, I think if I were in your shoes, I would um, CC the parent on everything. Just get that right out of the way because um, there's really no reason not to. Um, communication with the children should be conducted in a group, it should include at least two authorized adults, again, parent basically every time. Um, and then communication with children should uh, be using a uh, child appropriate application to include uh, Remind, GroupMe, or Class Dojo, um, really based on the age of these participants. Um, it will probably be email to parent more than anything. Um, since America Reads primarily engages fairly young students. Um, and then participants can like friend the program or the event community page if one exists, but they can't like become your friend on Facebook or um, like they shouldn't be following you on, on Instagram. You certainly shouldn't be like following them on Instagram. Most of them are less than 10 years old, so they probably shouldn't have an Instagram anyways. Uh, but the idea is um, they shouldn't be engaging with you on like social media on a one-to-one -one basis. Um, so as far as individual communication goes, one-to-one -one social communication is prohibited between authorized adult and child program participant. Um, shouldn't accept friend or friend request from child program participants. Um, and then communication child program participants should not occur during inappropriate hours unless there's an emergency. I can't think of what an America Reads emergency would even be or mean. Um, I guess like the books are burning or something. Uh, but either way, the recommended time frame is 8A to 8P. Don't be writing emails at 2 a.m. and all of that. I recognize that a lot of college students work and they, they study during crazy hours and you know they might've forgotten to do something. If that's the case and you find yourself writing emails at 2 a.m., I get it, it happens. Just schedule it to send in the morning. Okay, it's super easy to do through Gmail. Okay, and then lastly, parents and guardians have the right to request in writing that all forms of electronic communication between the participant and the authorized adult be discontinued. So if uh, the parent doesn't want to continue with tutoring, uh, that's their right. Okay, so back to the PowerPoint. Again, you can um, familiarize yourself with COPA and FERPA as you wish. 
Okay, Google Classroom overview, you're going to collect, connect with students via Google Classroom. Okay, that's just classroom.google.com. Um, you can log in through your um, University of Michigan account. Whoops. And then lesson plans and activities are available on the curriculum guide. So you can see right here, um, this has been um, really churning out and Raven's even edited it within the past half hour. Um, so you've got a few different um, login tools. You've got the Google Classroom, you've got Epic, and you've got um, Boom Learning. Uh, so those are all options that you can use. Um, and then also you've got things split up by uh, common core state standards. Um, so this is just all kindergarten. There's a lot of kindergarten stuff. Okay, so once you've identified using formative assessments, like what the young person should be working on, uh, you can go and backwards match that to the standard. Uh, and then you can find uh, an activity that uh, that corresponds to that. So you've got first through fifth grade, quite a bit. Not all of them are quite broken out yet, uh, but you've got a lot of options, okay? And uh, most of you will be working K through three, I believe. Um, so most of those are flashed out. So you've got a lot of really good options here. Okay, uh, definitely use that. Um, I believe you'll have some leeway uh, for planning individual stuff if you so choose. Um, but you got a lot of good options that are just provided. Okay, reflection. I'm gonna ask that you uh, pause and reflect on two questions here. The first being, what way would you readjust to meet the needs of your 2T? Just take a second, maybe pause the video and reflect on that. And next, what additional resources would you need before you start? So uh, I would frame this as, okay, you're gonna start Monday, what do you still need before Monday or whatever uh, date that you set? Okay, so you also wanna set high expectations, okay? This is part of doing the job well. So these are some tips to consider um, for America Reads tutors. Okay, so here we've got a graphic. It's called Best Practices for Teaching Online. Okay, and a lot of these practices are good practices in person too. Okay, good teaching is good teaching, and it really just needs adapted um, for the, the situation, the students and the scenario at hand. Um, so for teaching students online, uh, you want to orient students specifically to the online course. Um, some good practices here would be breaking learning into smaller chunks like we talked about before uh, and developing a tempo of activity, right? So uh, that level of consistency is super helpful. If you think about your own classes, uh, when professors have stuff due one week on Tuesday and the next week on Thursday and then the next week at Sunday at noon and then the next week at you know Tuesday at midnight, that's tough to find, right? That's tough to, to get into a specific groove for. Um, so develop a specific tone and cadence uh, with which you're gonna do stuff, okay? Try to tie stuff back to real world applications. Um, this is a little bit easier with reading um, and vowel sounds because like reading is important. It's like they see words all over the place, okay? Um, your instructor presence. So you want to establish your presence by just being active, right? Show your personality, your passion, your experience. Um, I know, I mean, I interviewed quite a few of you um, that are still working there and uh, like show your experience. I know many of you care quite a bit about this job and about students. Um, so let that shine through even the virtual environment. You want to set clear expectations. Uh, this isn't necessarily about um, the syllabus or the due dates or the schedule, like this graphic suggests, um, but show what you expect and explicitly state what you expect out of the tutoring session, okay? So uh, depending on what that is, what allows um, the student to learn well and what allows you uh, to tutor well, uh, you need to be explicit about that. 
Okay. Um, learning objectives. So make sure that you um, let students know what we're trying to get out of the session. Um, and then uh, make sure that the content is aligned to it. Okay. So at the beginning of this session, I told you that the goal was that you could like legally comply with um, the requirements of tutoring and that you could also use strategies to do the tutoring well. Okay. And I think the content of this presentation has, has aligned with that. Okay, you want to give prompt feedback. Um, so this is a lot easier um, in the virtual environment. Or I'm sorry, this is a lot easier in person uh, because you can uh, see what word they're working on. Um, and if they're having trouble pronouncing it, you can um, offer opportunities for them to sound it out. I'm expecting this to be a bit tougher in the uh, in a virtual environment, uh, but it's something that you'll work on. Um, and, and you'll find a way, okay? Uh, so you wanna provide timely feedback. Um, this, I'm not expecting too many like assignments turned in, given feedback on. Um, so it's more like give useful feedback in the moment um, as it occurs. And then lastly, engage students. So I think this might be the toughest part is you'll wanna find ways that you can actually engage students in the material. Um, because it's tough, right? It's tough when they're at home. It's tough when they're, you know, sitting on a couch. Um, and it's going to be especially tough since a lot of them have already, uh, like, gone to school, so to speak, all day um, in a virtual environment. And they might be tired of looking at screens, okay? Um, so finding the correct balance uh, while also engaging students is going to be tough, but it's important work, okay? So feel free to refer back to that um, that graphic as need be. Um, and then next, the importance of checking for understanding. Some uh, call it CFUs for short. Um, this is also called uh, formative assessment or checks on learning. Uh, there's a lot of different terms that it goes by, but the idea is that you want to see uh, if they're learning what you're trying to teach them. Okay, so they tell us what the 2D can do, can tell what they've learned, uh, but alternatively, it also tells us what they haven't learned, okay, what didn't stick. Okay, they allow you to measure student learning um, and monitor student learning in real time. That allows you to uh, be a reflective practitioner. It allows you to make adaptations in real time uh, based on your participants' needs. Um, and it'll also help you plan the next move. Okay, so uh, we talked about high expectations. Part of that is challenging the student. And so if you're working with a first grader that has a really strong grasp on what they're doing, uh, it's time to up the challenge a little bit. And checks for understanding can help you uh, determine what level of challenge you should be going for. Um, right here, dataworks.ed.com is a nice blog post about the importance of checking for understanding. Uh, it's a bit long if I remember, so we're not gonna go over all of it. Uh, but this would not hurt to uh, to do a quick skim of. It gives you some ideas of um, things that you can do, um, even though they are not um, necessarily aligned to the virtual environment. Um, strategies to check for understanding um, so that you can have them draw it, right? So 2Ds can draw what they understand, uh, what's still a little murky, what they don't understand. Um, or also if you're reading a story, um, you can do a check for understanding um, by like having them draw the ending, okay? Or their favorite character or stuff like that. Um, you can do a yes, no chart, okay? So um, 2Ds can just list what they do and don't understand about a given topic. Um, sometimes you might have to give them the, the subtopics so that they can actually like parse them out and move them to one side or the other. Um, and then three questions, 2Ds ask uh, three questions about the topic and then rank them in ter terms of importance or of value, okay? Um, and so this helps students kind of get a grasp on um, like what's important for me to know that I still don't get. Okay, that one's a little bit more advanced, I think. Um, so maybe that's not the first that you pull from your bag of tricks. Okay, um, but I really like the stoplight method. If it's red, like no idea what's going on. Okay, this was me in Calc 2. I was just always on red. Um, yellow is I think I understand, but I need a little support. Maybe they have some clarifying questions that they need to ask. 
Um, and then green is I understand and I can try this on my own. Okay, we're trying to get everybody to green. Um, and if they're red, we're trying to get them to yellow. Okay, here we've got some references. I know you're all gonna go through and read all of this um, afterwards. So please enjoy that. Um, and then lastly, just a little plug for the Ginsburg Center. Uh, Ginsburg Center offers students the opportunity to engage, educate, and connect. Um, and then student orgs the opportunity to um, support, educate, and connect. Okay, and that's it. Thank you for joining me for this training on engaging remotely with youth.